It is a beautiful day here in July 2015 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's a little past noon and I'm going to meet John C. Kings for the first time. I've not been in Pittsburgh um, since I started this project and now here I am after all these years talking to John over the phone and over email, thinking about him, writing about him for the book and I'm probably going to get to meet him. He said he's picking me up in his uh, brown Jeep and we're going to head over to the Seltzer Works which I've also never seen before. Uh, I'm, I've only seen a few photos of it actually so I'm thrilled to get to finally meet John in person and get to actually go be in this space that plays such a, a central part of the book. I can't wait. Hey John. Hey Barry. So here I am with John Seekings in his Jeep. Mm -hmm. uh, what neighborhood did you say we're in? We're in Regent Square. We're in Regent Square and heading towards to, Seltzer Works. To the Seltzer Works. Which exactly is what right. Neighbor, what's the name of the neighborhood there? It's Swissvale. Swissvale? And Swissvale is the name of the neighborhood, yes. Right. Let's say it again. Welcome to Seltzer Works. Wow. Here it is. I can't believe I'm finally here. Welcome to Pittsburgh Seltzer Works. I'll we'll follow you. After you, sir. Here we go. So we're at the epicenter of all the good seltzer. This is where it starts. Where should we start? Should we look at the machines or the bottles? Absolutely. Let's go this way. So our line is simple, but it's complex. What we do, we take water, municipal water, and we filter it to about 34 degrees, just above freezing, is exactly where we want to get it. And it comes in through here, and then it comes to the key of the whole process. Our carbonator, so Chicago Carbonic Carbonator, 1908, it's almost like a, hmm, the system is inside is a giant paddle, like an old paddle they used to, in bakeries. And that's what makes the seltzer. So we bring in really, really cold water and really, and CO2 under really high pressures. And it churns and it churns and it churns. And that's what creates the Chemical, what's the word I'm looking for? Chemical reaction? That's exactly it. What's happening is that paddle is moving as cold water is coming in and CO2 under very high pressure. It can't be duplicated by modern machines. And that's what makes really, really good seltzer. Good, hard seltzer. So we're here. Very, very high pressures, about 120 PSI, and it'll fill up, and we can watch it as it comes up the globe. What do you see here? Go up the globe. So you'll see the water fill up this globe, and when it's full, we'll kill it, and we go to the bottling. We'll go to the bottler? We'll go to the bottler. Mm -hmm. This bottler was made in 1898 in London, England, and when we put them in, all our bottles will go inverted like this. And what we do is we add a little bit more CO2, but that water, which is really high pressure here, is going to a place where there's no pressure. So it automatically pulls the water up in here. We hit this, pulling our water, which is cold and already seltzer, and we're putting in the bottle, adding a little bit so we have a bladder of CO2 in here so it never, ever goes flat. Never goes flat. And they'll go in simple as this. Everything's done by hand. And that's what will fill it up. The key to the process is the carbonator. This, when we first talked about getting Pittsburgh Seltzer Works, we talked to a bunch of folks in New York who, had, who were part of the industry, who were the folks that made it happen. This particular carbonator, they said, keep it running as long as you possibly can. It makes the best seltzer. Mm -hmm. So we have done our best to make that happen. We have redundant ones that are a little bit older, 
but this particular model may be one of the last running in North America. Right. And what's on the shelf right behind you? Well, it has a here label on it. Is, now, as you can see, we call them the bottles of death. <laughs> Why do you call them bottles of death? Well, early on, when, you, when we're bottling, there's very, very high pressures, very cold water, and sometimes hot bottles, and they'll explode. They'll, it's a, when we first took over Seltzer Works, when they exploded, I would be on the ground as fast as possible, trying to, in a fetal position, underneath the bottler saying, you know, am I okay, looking at my hands? Now, if it happens, which is rare, um, I'm more upset that we lost a bottle. Hmm. But we keep them, and we keep days since the last explosion. Where does it say that? Where do you, where, in that's, in my, that's in my head. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the, the learning process was, was, was pretty steep. You know, it seems like a real simple thing to like turn this on, turn water on, make sure this is cold. But the reality is to make really good seltzer, people, stuff that people really enjoy, there's a little bit to a, of a science to it. There really is. And, you know, we're, we're working day to day to kind of perfect that. We know, you know, we can get tests on this. Our water looks like this. But the reality is, is when you just hit that first one, it should feel a certain way. And that's what we strive for when we come in here and we're handballing everything. Let's talk about all the bottles in the wall behind you. We have probably one of the largest collections of bottles anywhere in North America. These are all ready to be hand washed, sterilized, and put back into action. Um, they are from all over the Midwest, all over the Northeast, and you know, wherever we can, we collect them. We, we're fortunate, we actually had a, a customer here in Pittsburgh whose father had a seltzer company in Cleveland. And she said, listen, you know, if you ever come across a bottle with this name, you just let me know. And we said, absolutely. So we looked around a little bit. We found probably, I would say, 30 or 40 bottles that belonged to her grandfather's company back in the day. This dates back to the 20s. And that's what we delivered to her. And it meant a lot. And she has been a tremendous customer for us ever since and I said they literally come from everywhere and it's hard to kind of store them. We will take any bottles that come in because we want to put them back out there so people can enjoy it. Do you ever have other bottles from other uh, previous clients? Absolutely. We. An interesting story is we got a call from the William Penn Hotel which is one of the first hotels in Pittsburgh and the first one that had bathrooms and they came to us and said, we're opening up a prohibition style bar and we'd like to serve this seltzer. I said, you know, we can certainly provide that. Not only that, we have the bottles that you had, you know, at the turn of the century. So all we give them now is those bottles. I see there's a second um, bottler down there. Could we take a look at it? Sure. So tell us about this one. This is in the process of being renovated. Again, it's a Barnett and Foster from 1898. Um, we came across this. It was in someone's farm just outside of Rochester, New York. And these are very, very, very rare. So we're in the, you know, literally in the process of renovating it, making it a workable, uh, workable bottle for when they come in here can see how the whole process takes place, that it's not, you know, we just don't stick stuff in and everything is really done by hand. Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Sorry, we had a bus. Um, so when folks come in, we want to have a second line. So when they see us bottling, you know, they can see it's all done by hand. And uh, these were amazingly engineered. It's very, very simple. And you know the parts are hard to come by, but we're in the right city to, if we're missing something, to have someone come in and say, you know what, I can do this, and they'll do it in their garage, and they'll, you know, help us out. Now, when you're bottling, so you have you showed us there's the machine that filters the waters. Yeah, water, right? So we're filtering. We go, we'll go through 
uh, charcoal, sand, and string. We have wonderful municipal water here in Pittsburgh. We're very fortunate about that, but it'll take anything from the delivery system, any oxides out. So when we get to the actual bottling process, our water is 100% clean. Like we test it against anybody and you know, it really tastes great. It's really good. Now, what's this thing behind me over here? So this is our bottling line. On a perfect day, and you can tell today, we're out of bottles because we can't keep up with demand. These bottles here are Argentinian bottles. So they're more modern. We can bottle them at a little higher pressure. Um, and these are all that's left from this week of bottling. There's just no, we, we simply can't keep up with demand from restaurants, from home delivery. Uh, but when you're bottling, uh, I see these are on wheat, uh, like rollers? Yeah, <laughs> so they'll roll. So we'll bring them down. And when I am bottling, and I may be here first thing in the morning or very late at night, but I'll bring them down to where I am here bottling, and that gives me access to pull them down, and they'll keep going through. This is actually an original Pittsburgh Seltzer Works bottle. From what? The wow. What's that say in the middle? Club Seltzer. Club Seltzer. Club Seltzer. 26.5 ounces. And this probably dates back to about, hmm, this is a 1940s type bottle. Now we'll have bottles here. I think we were showing you some. Yeah, let's look at some cool bottles. A bottle like this, which is kind of tough to see, which has a Pittsburgh without the H. Huh. So it's just a G, now that predates 1912, when they put it back in there. So we'll pull some of them. I mean, our hope ultimately is people can enjoy the bottles and the really good seltzer. That's what we want to do is keep them going out. Um, and and our, our customers take better care of the bottles probably than we do. But there are some that are just so cool that we'll pull them to the side and just Hold on to them. Let's see what's. Uh, they're a part of history. They're living history. They really are. And they're from all over the place from Brooklyn, from Michigan, from Philadelphia, from Pittsburgh. These used to be in every block. If you wanted a soda, you would go to the soda fountain and you would get a seltzer bottle from Coca Cola and you'd add your syrup. And, you know, I, I don't want that history to disappear. And that's why we keep doing what we do. And we're fortunate to be in a place that, you know, our customers appreciate that and understand it. And they, they kind of work with us. We're, it's a really unique business model, really unique. And I'll sit there and I'll be here at two in the morning and I'll be bottling and you'll see some really cool bottle or something that um, just something that kind of wakes you up a little bit and that's uh makes it all worth it it's truly a labor of love and these things are an amazing part of our history absolutely amazing so this is one of our customers who keeps an ongoing list of what seltzer will cure and i think i've got every single one of these problems <laughs> from hokum to the rhombus but this is what our customers do they really feel part of what we're all about, and they're the best customers in the world. I, I Who understand. else would send it? I mean, they <laughs> sent it to us. Oh, this is a photograph? Yeah, it's a photo of some. They keep it in their house. <laughs> and they just continually <laughs> put on there. So if you've got the, Mah the, the Mahoney stink, Seltzer is gonna cure that for you. There's no question. And it's, as I said, it's just, there's no other businesses like that, none. And we love it, we totally love it. There's, every time an article comes in the paper, one of our customers will leave it in a case to make sure that we've seen about it. And they, I mean, they truly feel vested in what we're doing. It's really cool.
I see the seltzers are in these beautiful boxes over here. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the boxes? Take a look the at boxes, them? yeah. They, they all... Um, the crates, what are we calling them? The crates are... You know, they went back. This is, you know, the, mo the same model for the milk delivery was with seltzer. And they generally come in sixes or in tens. What we do here is we're mostly tens just because these are... You know, they're feeling their age. We keep them um, as best we can, the bet, you know, in, <laughs> in good shape. We've tried to have them, have them duplicated, which is tough. But you can see in some of them, this is a tough one to see. Let me see if I can find a good one that has an old phone number on it. Just gotta get one around here. They come from everywhere. They come from Wisconsin. They come from Long Island. And it's amazing to look back and see that the phone numbers on them were literally four or five numbers. So these will, you know, we, we actually had an incident here at the Seltzer Works where in our bottling warehouse, a, a, a small animal got in raccoon and so I called someone and said listen you know, we have a raccoon here and we need to eradicate that that's not something we want to have here and we want to just make sure he gets out above our this was back in the 40s and 50s a bottling entity and when we set up traps we opened up the ceiling and found two three hundred cases from the 1920s from the company that was here prior. And they had just stored them above the ceiling because they had nowhere else to put them. So above the ceiling? Yeah, so we pulled the ceiling down. And they were... Wow. And is that the name of the old business and you put it up there? No, actually, you know what? That was just a really cool thing I saw on the side of a, bo a, a box. And I could probably find you it. And I said, when it's here, it's late at night and you're kind of looking around just the cool stuff we put on. We made our logo that was almost done out of boredom of, you know, we want to we kind of want to communicate to the folks what we're doing, but I bet I could find you the box that has that on. Give me one second. Okay. We'll be patient. <laughs> His office up there. Nice. Better on this side. As for an enjoy, you can see this dates back from Pittsburgh, but it's probably in the you know twenties or thirties. Any final words to end our tour? I think that you know what we're trying to do here, and others are too, is keep it going as best we can. Everything's done by hand. I, everybody that's doing this, it's, it's a labor of love. It truly is. And I have a huge amount of respect for anyone that's doing it. Machines are getting old. The folks that are doing it are putting in a ton of work. But ultimately, we make really good seltzer. Really good seltzer. And people enjoy it. And they notice the difference. I've sat in lines at the supermarket. And I'll, you know, after a long day, and someone will have a, you know, a store-bought seltzer. I just tap them on the shoulder and say listen you know we're here and you should try this every one of them stays with us every one of them thank you john thank you